Yes. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, um, so welcome everyone. Uh, thank you all for attending my session today. Um, you all are attending during the auspicious uh, after lunch hour. So kudos to you, you all are certainly troopers. Um, I want to thank Jessica and Catherine for hosting my session today. Thank you, Catherine, for the introduction. And thank you both for monitoring the chat and for making sure that Zoom does not crash and burn. So um, in all seriousness, as Catherine has introduced me, my name is Tabitha Samuel, and I am the digital archivist for the Waring Historical Library. And today I will be discussing how um, we have been going about documenting life during the COVID-19 pandemic and how that has manifested with our creation of the MUSC COVID-19 archive. Okay, so I believe that most people who are affiliated with SCAA are familiar um, with the wearing in some way, but in case you are not, we are the Rare Books and Special Collections Library at the Medical University of South Carolina, or MUSC, and we are located in Charleston. Our collections document the history of the health sciences in South Carolina and the Southeast, as well as the history of MUSC. And our collections consist of the manuscript collections of the Waring, the MUSC University Archives, our digital archive, and the Macaulay Museum of Dental History. And currently, our staff consists of four full-time employees, our curator, university archivist, myself, the digital archivist, and the library's administrative assistant. So let's get into the origins of the MUSC COVID-19 archive. So back in March, um, when pretty much everyone um, was coming to a halt, unless you were an essential business, um, if you were non-essential, um, you were either shuttering or you were moving to a uh, remote uh, work from home model. And of course, the wearing just like much of you all, um, if not all of you all, uh, was in that group. So at that time, our curator um, started the conversation about how we would go about documenting life and what was happening um, during the pandemic. Uh, during that time, so much was happening, as you know, the, the words of the year, everything was unprecedented and uncertain, and they certainly were at that time. Um, with MUSC being um, one of the primary um, healthcare institutions in the state, if not the primary healthcare institution in the state, um, it has been, um, during that time, so much was happening, and there were so many transitionings go transitioning going on. And um, there was so much that was happening in terms of clinical care and, um, and they were um, trying to figure out what was happening with P PPE. So there was, there was a lot that was changing um, at that time. So it was um, through the foresight of our curator um, that we were uh, able to get the ball rolling as an institution and to also have that um, trickle down as a concept to the other stakeholders at the university to start thinking about how we were going to document this time. So he drafted the COVID-19 archive concept, uh, which was called the MUSC COVID-19 archive documenting life during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so he circulated that to the remainder of the MUSC library staff as well as to other entities on campus, and I believe that included the president's office at that time, just to draw initial interest um, and also to introduce them to the idea of if you are uh, creating um, in this time, to also be mindful of how that could be used um, and be of historical value and preserved. So uh, from there, uh, our staff started researching other, other institutions' online projects for documenting life during COVID-19 for design concept ideas, 
at that time in March, there weren't that many um, online projects. There were um, a handful of them. And, you know, in terms of uh, the, here in the United States, we were just coming upon um, how, you know, we were just starting to get badly hit with COVID at that time. Um, but there were, you know, other portions of the world that was dealing with this longer than we were. So there were some projects uh, that we were able to use as a model for our design concept ideas. So as we were developing the project in the beginning, um, we had the primary mission of collecting personal reflections. And then, of course, that evolved to uh, start collecting MUSD records. We knew that having our position at MUSC that collecting MUSC records would certainly be, would certainly be pretty uh, easy compared to collecting personal reflections. So we wanted that to be our primary mission from, from the beginning. And so that was to document individual stories and to provide an opportunity for people to share their experiences as a community. And so this piece about sharing as a community was really important to us from the start. We knew that this was a shared experience of being in the pandemic, whether you were directly uh, affected by it through um, experiencing COVID yourself or losing a loved one or being um, on the front lines or working in an essential business capacity, whether you were experiencing those things or not, we were all still sharing this experience. And so we wanted to be able to make this um, more of a, um, a shared experience in terms of sharing our, sharing our personal reflections um, with each other and not for us as the archives to be collecting this, um, but we wanted to be able to share um, and feature these upfront. And then the component in terms of collecting MUSC records, those were, of course, to document the efforts of the MUSC health system and the um, clinical care that was happening. Um, and then also the changes that were happening within the university, highlighting programming, innovation, and communication. So as I mentioned before, the wearing um, in terms of our collections uh, range, from collect, range from documenting the history of South Carolina and the Southeast, as well as the history of MUSC. And so that is the same with this project. So first off with documenting um, life in South Carolina and the Southeast, the parts, the materials that we would be collecting would become part of the Waring's manuscript collections and also uh, a part of the digital archives. And the materials that we would be collecting would range from written and video diaries, poetry, artwork, photographs, prose, and musical compositions. And um, that's just a, just a selection of the things that we would collect, but we would collect really anything that was coming out of creative expression. Uh, during this time, and it doesn't have to be anything that is um, explicitly relating to COVID-19. It could just be writing a journal entry about how your day is going. Um, we felt that those materials would certainly be relevant to capturing uh, what life is like during this time. And then our collection strategies would be for users to voluntarily submit their personal reflections to us, and then also the wearing as a staff, we would be actively searching for and collecting materials, documenting life in the community. Um, in terms of MUSC and MUSC Health, um, those records, of course, would be a part of the university archives, as well as our digital archives collections. And the types of materials uh, would be wide ranging, but um, the materials that we would immediately would be looking for that they were producing uh, would be flyers, meeting minutes, photographs, web pages, videos, and newsletters. And then our collection practices would include the wearing staff actively uh, searching and collecting this, these materials. Um, but also we would want uh, departments across MUSC's enterprise to voluntarily deposit those records into the university archives. So um, here's a look at the uh, design components for the archive. So um, this is particularly for our um, 
online uh, component and our, our user interface, but also uh, somewhat on the back end of what we'll, the tools that we'll be using. You notice that uh, all of this, of course, is uh, not in paper form because we're still very much so uh, working remotely. So the first part of this is using LibGuide's content management system. And so we use LibGuides to be able to create the web page for the project and also for us to be able to create a blog. We wanted to have that space of sharing those personal reflections. And so we thought that a blog would be the perfect fit for that. Um, and then we also have, uh, we've used LibWizard to be able to create our submission form. The submission form can be used for submitting both the personal reflections as well as starting a submission to deposit your um, MUSC records. And then we also have created a dedicated email address for the project. So this is for anyone who wants to communicate with us about the project and also for um, us to receive notifications from LibWizard of any submissions that we have received they would certainly go there. And then we've also created a box folder directory for um, our MUSC departments to share their records in batch with us. One of the limitations of using LibWizard to, as, a, um, as a, a mechanism to create a submission form is that you can only upload one thing at a time. And of course, that is not useful if you are wanting to share records in batch in um in a batch uh batch loading um so we decided to as a, a workaround for that to create a box folder directory in which departments can share their files with us uh more easily and they'll already have access because that is our uh primary file sharing system with the university and then of course uh, we have our own preservation storage for uh, storing all of these records. So here's a look at our project timeline and uh, everything kind of developed uh, relatively quickly, I'd say. So starting in mid-March, as I said, we started having these conversations as a staff about collecting COVID-19 related materials. And then um, around that time, our curator also drafted the project overview and, uh, and sent that around to various stakeholders and entities at MUSC. And then in late March, we investigated other institutions' COVID-19 archive projects, and we designed our online platform at that time as well. The, the, the reason why we also used LibGuide CMS to be able to get this off, the, off of the ground was because it was pretty uh, user friendly and pretty efficient for us. So it's something that we could turn around relatively quickly and make that accessible to people uh, without having to go through much customization in terms of um, if you were using Omeka or any other sort of content management system to create a website. Um, that would, you know, require uh, a longer, a longer time to be able to develop that. So uh, that's one of the reasons why we use LibGuides to do that. So we designed the online platform using LibGuides um, in late March for accepting those personal reflection submissions and also for per for posting to the blog. So this is where I said that we um, were stressing the personal reflections on the front end. So those were the things that we were taking at that time in March. And so we also uh, started making presentations. This was around late March and early April and um, writing, writing pitches and sending those to major departments across MUSC. And then in late May, um, sometime in June, we decided, well, I guess this is a good time for us to start um, it, taking in deposits to the MUSC University Archives. So we updated our submission form that was already existing. And uh, we also updated our workflow to be able to accommodate those deposits to the MUSC University Archives, which will be documenting um, MUSC's operations, decisions, and programming, and so forth. So here's a look at our uh, at our web page for the project, 
And there's a link at the bottom at the end of the presentation. Um, there's also, I have the link again. So if you don't get it here, you can get it at the end. Um, but yes, yeah, so this is our web page for the project. This is using LibGuides. We did have to do some customization on the back end to be able to, uh, to do a deeper customization using CSS and um, some altering with HTML. Um, we also had to break out the right column um, so that you can uh, have your, your panel there to align with the blog format of um, highlighting recent posts, as well as integrating the social media, which is very important for us and was one of the ways that we have been um, able to market our project. And so also on the web page, we have included um, a, uh, a page for MUSC University Operations, which is just a, a, an outline of the types of MUSC records that we are uh, accepting into the University Archives. And then uh, there's an outline for personal reflections to uh, just let our users know of the types of materials that they can feel free to create and that we uh, will be accepting. And then we also have the submission page as well as a link out to the blog. Okay, and so here's a look at our blog. And so again, this is using LibGuides. And so um, we felt that this would be a really good way to be able to have people uh, feel that this is more of a shared experience because all of us are experiencing this together. And so we've given our users the option to be able to share their stories, um, whether they are identified or whether they want to share them anonymously. So if they choose that they still, they would love to have their story shared on our blog, we give them the option, you know, you don't have to be identified and that's, that's more than okay with us. And so we uh, include an excerpt of their, of their personal reflection. Um, and usually our users have been pretty receptive to including um, their identification and um, some sort of context and description. And so we usually allow them to, uh, to edit those because I don't, I don't think that on the front end they realize that that's actually, that actually would appear with their blog post. So we give them that option once we contact them and they edit those. And so this is how it appears on the blog. And then we also um, have that social media integration because we want to be able to easily share these um, on social media and also have our users follow us and um, to be able to follow the, the project. And so here's a look at um, the first part of our submission form. We wanted to make it pretty accessible in terms of how people can participate. So in addition to submitting their work online, they can choose to send their materials to us through the mail. So we've included a uh, printed submission form, which is the deed of gift for what they would be, um, that what they will be submitting to us. And then uh, we've also included our, our mailing address there, but this submission form would be used to uh, deposit your MUSC records or to, um, to submit your personal reflection. And if it is used to submit your personal reflection, then the online submission form operates as your deed of gift. And so as you can see at the top where it says type of contribution, and then we have uh, MUSC records selected, this is the portion of the form that you would see if you selected MUSC records and this is what you were wanting to submit and the fields that you would, um, that you would then have to fill out. And so from there, we're notified. And then uh, once we see that it is an MUSC record, uh, submission, then we contact the staff and go from there and they can have the freedom within this to check whether they are submitting electronic records, paper files, and physical, physical objects or both. And then from there, we're able to accommodate the type of records that they are depositing with us. And so uh, with this portion of the submission form, you could see in the middle, um, that there is the personal reflection option that has been selected. And so if a user is submitting their personal reflection 
course they have these the different fields there we decided to of course tailor it to our uh, deed of, to model it after our deed of gift form but we also wanted to include some fields that would be useful for us as we are creating our blog entries um, and just also some other descriptive um, fields that would help us um, in uh, creating our metadata for it uh, for whenever we do create a, a digital archive or in in our preservation of these materials. And this is the end of the submission form. If you are submitting a personal reflection, as you can see from the terms of acceptance and signature portion, this is where we have our clause on the deed of gift form and we've included that so that they know um, exactly what they are submitting and um, their uh, uh, rights and responsibilities with this. And then we have also have, um, as I mentioned before, you're only able to submit one file at a time. Unfortunately, that's the limitation of the um, of the LibWizard form. So typically, you know, if they if they would have a second a second submission that was unrelated, they would have the freedom to do so. But you cannot submit uh, multiple entries using one form. Okay, so here's a look at our workflow for collecting personal reflections. Um, the user, as they come to the submission form, they uh, complete the submission form, and then that submission is stored in LibWizard. And then from there, our staff downloads the content and then would upload it to our server. And then we would contact the user um, to contact the creator of that work uh, to gain their consent if we decided that we wanted to post it to our blog. And then um, they tell us, we give them the option of um, posting it anonymously or to include, include a description of them and include the description that they've included on their uh, submission form and uh, to edit that portion. And so we, we usually send them a link uh, before it is circulated out, uh, just to let them know this is how it's going to look so that they can let us know if there's anything that they would want to change. And then um, we usually uh, release those on Fridays um, once we have a new uh, a, a new blog post that we would want to feature. And here's a look at our workflow for collecting MUSC records. So a, uh, a MUSC department user would complete the submission form and then a notification is sent to our COVID-19 project email account. And then our, set, our staff you know, determines whether it is uh, in this case an electronic uh, record that is being submitted. And so uh, we send them a link to a box folder that we create. And so then the, stat, the uh, department would upload, upload that content. And of course we would uh, download the content from the server and upload it to our server. And then if it is a physical record, which has not happened yet because um, a lot of our university side um, of MUSC is still working remotely or in a hybrid model um, in some way. Um, if that were the case, if we were receiving physical records, we would then coordinate with that department to schedule a time for um, a drop off of those materials. So in terms of our collection practices, we have been um, that are independent of um, what our users have been submitting. We have been actively collecting. Uh, we have been cold calling, quote unquote, um, MUSC departments for records, uh, reaching out to them via email. Um, and as well as other health sciences institutions, um, including uh, Prisma Health Richland, Prisma Health Greenville, to encourage them to also submit their personal uh, reflections. Um, and then we also have been going out and capturing social media posts, websites, emails, and flyers that um, as we encounter them and as we um, have been scheduling our, our days to just focus on that, uh, within our work for gathering, gathering that and um, uh, having that as a part of our archive. So the outlets that we've used for promoting this project have included, of course, social media, um, the uh, many outlets of communication within 
MUSC, which have included Yammer, as well as uh, uh, electronic newsletters that we have, giving presentations such as this one, um, word of mouth, and then emails to other SC Health systems, as well as emails um, within the university. So, so far, here's a look at the uh, a snapshot of the personal reflections that we have collected. Um, they have been submitted by MUSC personnel and students so far, and they have included artwork, journal entries, video messages, and prose. Um, the image to the right is a portion of a uh, five plant panel uh, illustration that was put together by MUSC's graphic designer. And so he was uh, chronicling his journey to pick up his daughter in college, uh, which was pretty um, early on in the pandemic as everything was just kind of shutting down. He, had, he uh, in his description wrote, he had to rush in and get his daughter from college and, and uh, bring her back home. And so this is uh, just chronicling that journey. And so these are the types of materials that we are certainly looking for and um, ha have definitely added value and um, have added depth to our, our archive. And so in terms of the MUSC records that we have collected, they have been deposited by the President's Office, um, our Faculty Senate, uh, the Colleges of Pharmacy and Dental Medicine, Media Services, as well as Instructional Technology and Faculty Resources. And they have ranged from flyers, video messages, photographs, newsletters, and emails. To the right is an image that we have collected through um, our media services. And so this uh, certainly, they were a part of, um, they're still considered an essential service because they, they are um, part of our photography team. And so they are able to go around campus and document changes that are happening, um, such as this social distancing sign. And so we, we have uh, been able to collect um, a, a a wealth of images so far from them um, documenting these changes. Um, and here are some additional images that we have collected through MUSC Media Services. And this has included um, images of our test site, um, as well as um, personnel, including nurses and personnel in PPE um, and at testing sites. Um, images of, um, we have, we've had quite a few images of signs that are posted on along the perimeter of the testing sites. Um, a lot of images from MUSC's drive-through graduation, um, images of the exterior of the hospital and campus, which have um, indicators of social distancing, such as the note on the free, little free library um, concerning, uh, due to concerns of COVID, um, that the that the little free library is no longer um, in operation, and then the tent outside of the hospital, um, as well as uh, what has the innovations that have been happening in the lab, um, including antibody testing. So, in terms of our collecting, we have been able to collect websites, social media posts, videos, um, videos that have included a TEDx Charleston presentation. Um, which was uh, uh, a panel discussing, a panel of physicians from MUSC who were discussing the state of COVID in South Carolina, as well as in Charleston, as well as a training video that was produced by MUSC, which was a, a mandatory training video, um, emails and e-newsletters. And for now it's been MUSC and, MUSC and, and South Carolina focused. Uh, to the right, you'll see an example of one of the newsletters that we have been collecting, and this is the COVID-19 morning message, which was released by our MUSC CEO, MUSC Health CEO, Dr. Pat Cauley. And so very early on in the pandemic, he was releasing these um, morning messages as well as weekly newsletters just to update on the state of affairs, um, reminders of self-monitoring, uh, to give a breakdown of what was happening with PPE and also what was happening with the, the beds and the availability of, be availability of beds in the ICU for COVID-19 patients. So our successes, um, we have gained support and deposits from the offices of the president, as well as the CEO of MUSC Health, which I think 
is uh, is is phenomenal in terms of being able to provide a um, good foundation of support for us to be able to have support from the top. I think um, has been or, or and definitely will be um, going forward a a, a a a great start in terms of support, um, and it's definitely opened doors for new opportunities of collaboration with other departments across MUSC. Um, in the past, we have had a great working relationship with the MSC Office of Humanities, um, but this has opened up a new way for us to collaborate with them. The, the, off, the director of the Office of Humanities, um, at the time that we were developing this project, contacted us with the exact same idea. So she has definitely been one of our cheerleaders and uh, one of our um, advocates on campus for spreading the word about this project. And she's also bridged the gap between us and the International Student Association. We um, have been in contact with um, one of the directors of the Global Health uh, course, and they work closely with the International Student Association. And so the students were given an assignment to imagine um, what the world would be like in 100 years. And it was a cre creative writing assignment. So we have received um, a couple of those from from uh, that course, and so it's it's really been um, it's really been uh, uh, good to know that we have those contacts, and um, we feel like we that is a, a valuable place to be in terms of being able to bridge with uh, different departments that we haven't before, and the start of uh, new initiatives that we can have not only with this project but with others that we have within our library. And then we've also collected MUSC records from across 10 different departments, entities, and colleges um, across the enterprise, which we see as a, a success so far. Um, and then the image to the right is an image of a 3D print of a mass um, to assist with the PPE stock of resources for MUSC healthcare workers during COVID-19. So that is um, also uh, the types of images that we have collected. And I believe we are, um, we will be collecting a 3D print um, or several 3D prints of uh, masks that have been printed during this time. Um, so challenges. Uh, we have received um, the personal reflections that we have received in comparison to the MUSC records and the response that we have um, for that have been sparse. Um, we have not received personal reflections outside of MUSC yet. Um, making the pitch and the reminder for the project at such a sensitive time and when there is um, more pressing priorities for the institution, quite frankly, for everybody, um, has been a challenge. And so um, getting the message out across MUSC Enterprise has also been a challenge. Um, that has been a challenge in general uh, because there is not one uh, centralized method for communicating um, across MUSC, the university, and MUSC Health. So there, there is definitely a communication disconnect there. So we have had to get creative with the ways that we um, have been and, and finding new contexts, not just across the university, but across uh, MUSC Health to be able to spread the word about this project. And the content, uh, the COVID-19 relating related content that has been produced since January, early, January and early February um, has been in um, high volume. So it's been uh, quite difficult to kind of stay on the, the nose of that. And um, of course, this is an ongoing process. So um, it takes patience to uh, stay, um, to, to continue to, to remain, re, uh, keep your perspective through it. Um, so moving forward, the wearing staff um, discusses the COVID-19 project at our weekly meetings um, to be able to address any challenges and changes um, that are happening and also to keep up the momentum with the project. Um, our vision for our digital collections um, is developing. Um, so uh, with that, I can see an integration um, of the MUSC records into digital commons, which we are migrating to now. Um, and then just this week, uh, the idea came to me of uh, possibly uh, creating an exhibit or collection because we are coming up on our bicentennial celebration in 2024. And so we will be preparing a series of exhibits and collections 
um, relating to uh, different topics um, and marking up to our bicentennial. So certainly incorporating an exhibit or having a uh, dedicated collection online that is uh, relating to uh, COVID, to the COVID-19 pandemic and life during that uh, would certainly, I think, be useful to have um, and, and a good resource for people. And then we also um, would like to expand upon relationships that we have, uh, of course, with the Office of Humanities and other, um, other departments across campus, including the International Student Association and the uh, Global Health. Um, and then also continue to build relationships with smaller health systems and practices in South Carolina. And then to extend our promotion to print and digital outlets on campus, um, such as digital signage and uh, print, print flyers uh, because students and faculty now have more physical access to the buildings as more, more programs are moving, have moved on campus for the semester. So we now can have that, um, now be able to use that more to our advantage. And then lastly, to have that continued patience with this, pro with this process, um, we know that everyone's going through a lot. And so it certainly takes that level of understanding, including ourselves. So um, being able to understand that and understand that this process is ongoing um, is the thing that certainly helps us to stay encouraged with it. And um, we have been able to uh, move along and celebrate the victories as they come along and uh, to make sure that the, in the long run, this, this uh, collection that we are building in this archive that we'll, we're building will be able to provide value to our users. So um, thank you. And here is my contact information, the link to our website, as well as our project email. Thank you, Tabitha, so much for that presentation. Um, so the the links aren't clickable, but Jessica did put the link for the project site in the chat um, for anyone who wants it. Um, it, it it's clickable in there. Um, remember to put all your questions in the uh, chat box. We have a few questions and comments already. Um, Shelby Henderson said that. Um, the SC African American Heritage Commission is doing a digital project related to the pandemic as well. We're capturing stories and data from African Americans from every county in South Carolina. And I'm glad to see other institutions are doing similar things. Um, and the link to that project is also in there. Um, awesome. And that could be a great, uh, a great way for us to collaborate, Shelby. So thank you for sharing that. Um, oh, it looks like Grace had a question, but you answered it as you kept going. So oh, okay. <laughs> uh, about the volume of materials. Um, I had a, a question while, while some of these other ones are, are coming in. Um, so how are you capturing social media and websites and email? Like in what, what form are you capturing those in? Yes, so that is an excellent question. So our administrative assistant has been handling the social media portion, so I cannot answer that in full. Um, but for um, as far as emails, we have been, because um, most of them tend to be newsletters, so they have um, the downloadable uh, the downloadable PDF to them. So we have been uh, mostly doing that um, because most of the emails are, um, are newsletters that we've been receiving so far. Um, so to that end, they have been pretty much in, in PDF format so far. Okay. Great, thank you. Um, and Morgan Jones King asked, um, do you have a long-term plan for processing the MUSC records you're receiving as part of the project, it sounds like some of these materials would end up being incorporated into other record series. Yes, so we have just started actually um, with a, we've created kind of like a, a long-term preservation plan, but in terms of processing the materials, we have not had a formal discussion as to exactly how we want to approach it. But for now, we the way that we have them arranged is pretty much uh, by department and the way that we have received them from those departments. 
Um, and then I, while there's still questions coming in, I have a question about, so you mentioned preservation storage. Um, so is, can I ask what you're using for preservation storage? Yes. So, so for now we just have like our own, cause MUSD we have our own uh, server storage, but we are getting the Amazon Glacier. Okay. So uh, yeah, so we recently purchased that. So that will be part of our, um, our actual uh, dark storage for the project. Um, but for now, as far as our access and, and just having it on a server, we have our own servers within the MUSC, but just to have that added layer, we will, we will have Amazon Glacier as well. Any other questions for Tabitha about this project? I feel like I keep thinking of like digital preservation questions oh. <laughs> that are popping up in my head. So I'm like, um, Morgan asks, what can other archives do to assist getting the word out? Yes, absolutely. So um, anything in terms of if you have your own um, uh, stakeholders and um, your own uh, staff, I, I believe in working in-house and certainly you using your uh, resources to your advantage. So if you want to get out the word, um, and I can actually send you um, flyers that we've created for it so that you can circulate it, circulate the project and the flyers concerning the project um, to your list of stakeholders and your users and um, use uh, your networks to your advantage to be able to get the word out more. So we um, have our flyers created for it and I can share those with you. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, before this project had um, the wearing taken in or been working with electronic records and digital records or is this did this sort of jumpstart that you know what we we have been taking in um electronic records before um but we do not have like a um actual records manager and so we before this all started we have uh started a you know university-wide um kind of council or board for records management just to have um because it has been a struggle to uh, kind of coordinate that and to um, get everyone on the same page and to kind of, even though the uh, administration says that they um, support, you know, the record schedule and um, also supports uh, and uh, wants to enforce uh, having an actual system for depositing electronic records into the university archives. Uh, it has been a struggle with getting the word out and getting everyone on the same page. So sometime last year, we started an actual um, board for overseeing the records management process. And um, so that is coming along. We actually have um, met with several different departments um, in general, just to give them guidance and to help them identify records uh, within that they are producing um, that would fit into, of course, the record schedule and to go over the record schedule with them. Um, and so right now we have, um, after our first set of meetings, uh, we have had them just kind of go down and identify the records that they are uh, producing. And then um, we will have our next set of meetings, I believe in the next couple of weeks with them just to kind of go over everything. Um, but this is just kind of getting the ball rolling in a different way on the COVID project for this as well. Okay, great, thank you. We still have. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think we're right oh, at it. it is when I, for, for some reason, I was thinking twelve fifteen. Um, 
Earth. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh, this time change is killing me. Okay, well, um, if no one else has any questions, um, I guess we can go ahead and, and call it. And um, thank you so much, Tabitha, for, for sharing with us. And um, it sounds like y'all have a lot uh, going with this project. So definitely keep us updated and um, forward to seeing more. Um, and I guess I'll let people go so they can have their 15 minute yeah. break before the next session. I thought it was supposed to be 2.15. So. Uh, that was my bad, but um, thank you, Tabitha. No problem. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everybody. See y'all at the next session.